Bonjour, c'est vendredi sur Kix de la semaine. I've been relearning French with a phone app. But you know it's back, right? Right? Allons-y! Or I guess I should say, attack eyebrows. Kix of The language app is called Duolingo for anyone who's interested, and it's free and pretty nifty so far. So Steph is in Vegas now where I can touch her face in person whenever I want. You know, no big deal. And Mario shared some Simpsons and Ghostbusters love in an awesome shirt that I thought I should like match or something. Cause you know, we're awesome like that. And like you said, my AC went out last week again for several days this time so making a video was kind of a no-go i missed you but if you've liked our facebook page you already knew that and i kind of spent the day since i couldn't do a video posting links to things that i would have talked about a trailer for the nightwing fan series that several of my friends worked on a film industry issue involving the guardians of the galaxy writing credits and a kevin smith movie involving johnny depp and yoga enthusiasts fighting evil everything's on our page so go check out whatever you think is interesting but we we all know why I am really here this week. It's been gone since Christmas and season 8 finally started last Saturday. And I actually have quite a bit to talk about regarding the first episode, so I'm just gonna get right to it. The great thing about Friday is that there's been enough time since the episode aired that I don't feel incredibly obligated to avoid spoilers entirely. However, I will warn you when I'm about to talk about a big one just in case you haven't watched the episode for some reason. So, Doctor Who, Season 8, Episode 1, Deep Breath. It started a bit rough for me, honestly. And it had nothing to do with me mourning Matt Smith, because if you've been watching for a while, you know that I wasn't ever overly attached to Matt Smith as the Doctor, and I've been really excited about seeing Capaldi in the role. But for some reason, the beginning of the episode just felt off. Like, Capaldi's acting felt like acting, and nothing was really feeling right to me for some weird reason. But I think it definitely dug its heels in once Clara and the Doctor met up at the restaurant. Once they started bantering and actually solving the mysteries of the episode, it started to feel like Doctor Who again. And then it kind of just went full steam from there with a really good balance of fear, humor, and of course, feel jerking. The only thing that kind of makes me feel like the awkwardness at the beginning of the episode might have been on purpose is because Moffat was definitely using Clara as a representation of the audience in this episode. Just like we're dealing with the new Doctor, so is she, and as she starts accepting that change, the episode gets stronger and feels more and more right. My only problem with this is a certain phone call at the end of the episode. No spoilers yet, I will warn you when I actually talk about it. So one of my problems with Moffat in general is that he likes to use characters to blatantly tell the audience what to feel, and that's like a major, major pet peeve of mine with any movie or TV show. If you've done your job right with a movie or TV show, the writing and the story and the acting will make the audience feel what you want them to feel without you blatantly spelling it out for them through a character's dialogue. I know there are multiple examples of this, but the main one that's jumping to mind is something from last season, where a kid is reading a book and says he's on chapter 10, and Clara responds, 11's the best, you'll cry your eyes out. The good kind of crying. It was basically a pointless line of dialogue that lent nothing at all to the story of the episode, but there was definitely an undertone of, I want you to like my doctor the best, and you're gonna freaking enjoy this emotional roller coaster that I am about to create because Clara said so, and the companion is perpetually a representation of the audience because I said so. Enter the spoiler from this episode. For anyone who doesn't want to hear it, mute the video until this red box disappears. Cool? Cool? Cool. So basically, Clara spends the whole episode saying she's not sure if she knows the new Doctor or trusts this new version of him, much like the audience, and then there's a phone call from the dying Doctor on Trenzalore. He tells her that he's still the same Doctor and that he's just as scared as she is and to help him. Basically telling the audience, hey, trust the new guy and the show's gonna be okay without Matt Smith. For someone who wasn't emotionally damaged by Matt Smith's departure, this was kind of like another moment of Moffat telling me how to feel unnecessarily. However, since the whole episode was kind of centered around Clara's emotional dilemma, it felt more appropriate and like 
it had a place in that episode and it was kind of a nice way to ease any emotionally distraught fans through the transition. Plus, it was a positive, encouraging push towards the new Doctor rather than a negative jab at the previous one, which is always nice. So yeah, while things like that usually annoy me, I do understand it having its place in this episode, and I definitely think it was probably much appreciated by a lot of people. Overall, I really enjoyed the episode, and I enjoyed all of the tossbacks to seasons past, and I am definitely, definitely looking forward to more adventures with Capaldi. The second episode is tomorrow, revisiting some tried and true enemies, and I think that'll be the real test of who the new Doctor is as a person. Nothing reveals character like facing lifelong enemies! Let me know any of your Doctor Who thoughts in the comments. I'm curious to see how everyone else is feeling after our first adventure with Capaldi. And I hope everyone has an awesome week and stay geeky, and we'll see you next week.